Welcome back, welcome back. This is the final part. This is activity five, IT service management implications report. This is the final, final part. Now, my throat's hurting, I'm really sick, so I'm sorry I'm not gonna have really long sentences here. What I've done, I've made a few bullet points and I'm gonna explain and try and give some context where possible, rather than going over the whole thing and typing, which would take me about an hour. So, the first bullet point we have is implementing your solution and delivering the organization's services and products. The very first thing I would mention is probably downtime. Downtime is simply where the company isn't able to do work because you're doing what you need to do. So imagine you're the IT person, you come in with an IT team, you have a network engineer, um, a hardware specialist who is going to put the PCs together, plug in the network stuff, make sure everything's working okay, installing software. For that entire day, let's just say for a company this size, maybe two, three days, those entire two, three days, it is physically impossible for you to be at the company uh, running the restaurant because there are going to be too many people running around, nothing's working properly. And then even after that, you have to train people as well. And the training is going to be downtime because this is a brand new system. No one is going to be accustomed to it. Even if they're really good at IT, they might have to still learn how to take orders. They might have to learn how to use the screens in the kitchen, whatever the case is. So downtime and training are two things that you have to try and accommodate for. Training, again, as I said, is going to be downtime. People won't be able to work whilst training, so they might have to do some e-learning training at home. They might also have to come into the restaurant and do some training with maybe one or two people. So let's say the manager is a customer. The manager would say, okay, this is what I want to order. You would put it into your tablet, see how well that works. So I would go through and I would explain what downtime is briefly, brief, brief description of downtime and how downtime is going to affect this company. It affects every company in the same way. Uh, downtime is going to make no money. You're going to be training people. You're going to be installing new things which are going to work amazingly well, possibly. But downtime is going to mean that you have no money coming in. Next, we have maintaining new equipment if, um, if and when broken by staff or customers. That's going to be a thing that you have to consider. This is new IT equipment. And for some reason, I've worked in colleges and schools, IT equipment always gets broken no matter what. Once it's new, once you bring it in, People are fascinated with it. They use it a lot. They might not know how to use it properly. It gets broken. This is something that Roger or the owner needs to account for that. Let's say we bought 20 laptops for argument's sake, right? Out of those 20, I would say about two of them will break within the first month or two because so many people might be using them because they might be using them for the wrong reason. Something could happen. Another thing that you have to consider, and again, expand on these. I put bullet points here, but you need to expand, give fully detailed sentences, possibly mini paragraphs, three, four, five lines or so, explaining each one. Um, I said money to spend on new hardware. Some hardware will be expensive, and some cloud systems will help with the expense. For example, we're going to have to buy laptops, printers, tablets, phones, uh, point-of-sale machines, CCTV, uh, hardware firewall, we're going to have to pay for Virgin's uh, fiber optic, we're going to have to pay for EE's 5G, whatever the case is, we're it's going to cost Roger, it's going to cost the company. So legacy systems and compatibility. Legacy system, just like the name says, something that's legacy is old. So whatever old systems they have in place, it might not mesh so well with the new system. So if you think about it first, what they've been doing for the last, let's say for argument's sake, five years, is they've been taking orders by paper. They're going to have to somehow sit down and convert all that paperwork into digital form. They can scan it, they can copy it, but most likely it's going to have to be written in or typed in. Compatibility, again, let's say they had an old system where they were writing things down. Some newer systems might not take the older system stuff as, um, as well. So you might not be able to import old files into a new version of the software, just as an example. So... This is not so much necessary for this system, for this specific scenario, but something I wanted to mention anyway. Now, some of these I took directly from the examiner's report, which I will share on the website as soon as I get to that stage. I think that this Unit 14 might be the first set of um, resources I put on the website, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we have New Computer Hardware and Data Protection Act. Data Protection or Data Protection Act is going to be significant, like very, very important because we're coming in with computers, we're coming in with the internet. People's details are going to be stored. People's car details might be stored on the website as well. We will have access to some details. Data protection is severely, severely impacted if people don't know what they're doing. So that's why training is very important. Training is going to cost money and it's going to give downtime as well. So that's what I would have for the first box, the first um, thing. 
The next one we have is managing and supporting employees. Feel free to pause the video at any time, slow it down. I know I speak a bit quick sometimes. You can slow it down to like 0 0.75 if that helps. Managing and supporting employees. So how does the system help the employees do what they need to do in general? How does it benefit them? So I've said uh, we've implemented working online. We were using things like OneDrive and SharePoint, Microsoft Teams, uh, not screen sure, but screen share to solve problems. So I can screen share on my mobile phone and someone has an issue, I can help them solve it. I, I can screen share on my laptop using Microsoft Teams and help them solve the problem. I can also record training videos and share to all people on Teams. The video would be on OneDrive. So I could record something on my phone, for example, do a voiceover, upload it to OneDrive into the training area on OneDrive, and maybe only the bar people need to know how to do that thing. So I could share it with only the bar people. Perfect. Uh, we have built-in remote desktop software on Windows 11 Pro. That's most versions of Windows come with built-in remote desktop. But if you wanted again, when you did your research, you could have looked into remote desktop software. Um, account management via IT, Teams message, text, or email. So if we're going to have the IT people there as contractors, we could, I don't know, once a week, we say, okay, this, these are the things that need to be done. And we could send them a massive email with all the things that need to be done. They charge us, so on and so forth. If we're going to have IT staff on site all times, as in people that the, the owner has hired or that's been hired by the managers, we could have them do the account management. What that means is that if anyone has an issue with their login for the email, the teams, the machines that we're using, the new stuff, we could just go to IT. They'll either give us a temporary one, reset our password. Normally what they do in six forms now and colleges now and schools now, you just go to IT, tell them your issue. They don't tell you how they solve it. They just solve it. Next, I have e-learning tools to train staff and no need to come in to do simple things. So e-learning tools, there are so many of them. To be fair, I would probably stick to something like Microsoft Teams if I'm creating the training stuff myself, the training videos myself on the PowerPoints and all of that, I would stick to Teams. But let's say you're using a system created by another company, you might just use their e-learning online platform and that's perfectly fine as well. But for e-learning, that simply means electronic learning. They don't have to come into work to watch you read through a PowerPoint. They could stay at home, they could watch a video, they could see someone else using the device being recorded and they could then learn how to use it themselves that way as well. Under that, we have managing and supporting the organization's customers. So what has been done to make the customer's life easier? Data Protection Act, what is it and why is it being used here? We need to protect people's personal data. Uh, we need to get rid of that data. We need to, when, when they've asked us, we need to not use that data for anything else other than what it was intended to be used for. Um, health and safety as well, obviously. Don't allow people in the kitchen, Don't just general things, but I'm sticking to IT for this one. Computer Misuse Act, we need to ensure that none of our employees or customers are able to misuse the computer systems that we have to gain access to anything that they should not have access to. Um, yeah, that's it. Website with information. So the information that we could have on the website, we could have the menus, we could have um, offers, we could have opening and closing times, we could have the location of the restaurant, we, we could have seating available. So let's say it's a Friday night, Saturday night, really busy in most restaurants because people like to eat out on weekends. We could have a system where they go onto the website, see what seats are available and see how long they're available for. Another one I left out actually was allergies. A L L E R G I E S. Allergies are very, very important to have on your website nowadays. I don't eat dairy, so if I go onto the website, I look at the menu, and the menu should have the allergy information on there. So if I actually see that this thing has milk or, or eggs or whatever, I just avoid that thing fully. And finally, for this one, we have free Wi-Fi when at the restaurant. And again, turn all of these into sentences. So each one of these can be a couple sentences. So Data Protection Act, what is it? Why is it important? Why is this company using it? Computer Misuse Act, what is it? Why is this company using it? They need to. It's a legal responsibility of theirs to do Data Protection Act and Computer Misuse Act. The website, again, what is the website going to have on there? And I've mentioned all this stuff here. Turn this, these bullet points into sentences so they're easily read and easily understood. Uh, free Wi-Fi when at the restaurant so that they can make their order, so that they can review the restaurant, so that um, if you're somewhere like Nando's, where you can actually go into Nando's, you scan your table, you order stuff, and it comes directly to your table. You don't need to speak to anyone. That would be wonderful here as well. Next, we have managing the organization's IT assets. Now, maybe better to contract. Now, maybe better to contract, because again, we're making relatively small changes here in the grand scheme of things. Um, cost more now, but not ongoing payments. 
meaning that you might pay an IT contractor, let's just say for argument's sake, they're going to spend a whole week working. You might pay them five grand for the week to set up everything, make sure everything's working, and then they go away if everything's working fine. They also come with their own equipment, so you don't need to buy their laptops, their stuff that they bring to come and set everything up. All you would have to pay for is your stuff that you want set up. They bring their own equipment. Now, I said down here, if the company gets bigger, the website gets bigger, more employees, more restaurants, then higher IT staff, because it might be cheaper to actually have someone on staff that you can call, um, let's just say for argument's sake, 24 seven, they're always on call. That might work out cheaper, that might work out better, because if you have more, um, multiple issues throughout the day, you don't want to be contacting your contractor all the time, because every time you send them an email, they'll probably charge you. Every single thing that they do, they'll charge you. The way I work, Typically, if I'm doing a website for someone or doing some IT work for someone, I pay myself roughly, let's say, argument's sake, £30 an hour, right? This is what I would do. So if someone says, oh, can you replace the, uh, the hard drive in my laptop, give me an SSD, or someone just says, my laptop's really slow, can you help me out? I'll look at the laptop for free, then I'll say, okay, mate, well, you only have four gigabytes of RAM, you only have like a 500 gigabyte hard drive or hard disk drive. I'll say, okay, it's going to take me roughly two hours to rip the hard drive out, put an SSD in, add more RAM to the system, and reinstall Windows and their applications, or move everything, or transfer everything over from the hard drive. So I'll pay myself roughly £30 an hour. That's what the contractors will do as well. Every single thing that they do, they will charge per hour, they'll charge per item, depending on the complexity of the problem. Whereas if it's an IT member of staff, it doesn't matter how hard the problem is, they have to solve it. You're paying them a monthly salary, they have to solve it. So that's the benefit to the company of having IT staff um, in-house um, and I've also said here uh, staff will need their own equipment so this might cost a bit more as well so you will have to buy them the equipment that they need to work for you then the next one I have is ability to respond to changes in uh, the aims of the organization and the products and services it provides so I have said the new system is scalable per site currently if we have this one site, let's say this one is in London, this restaurant's in London, and we have every single other site that this web restaurant opens connecting to this London site, it might not work. But what I have is scalable per site, or just scalable in general, but this would work per site. The system could be copied at each new site, each new building, each new venue, each new restaurant, same thing, and connected over the internet safely. So maybe I connect the London restaurant at a Birmingham one using a VPN, I connect the both London and Birmingham onto the Manchester one using a VPN again, so we can all speak to each other. If deliveries are added, the implemented system should be able to accommodate. There are multiple smart devices that can be used for stuff like Uber Eats, Deliveroo, Just Eat, etc. Even if they do their own deliveries, we have enough tablets and laptops and things that can accommodate. We can just have one tablet that does that stuff, sat to one side. And every time an order comes in, it, bl it blinks, it flashes, it makes noise, whatever the case is. The website could be expanded to offer a table booking service, which gives individuals time slots. So again, Friday evening, Saturday evening, really busy, most restaurants. Rather than them driving all the way to the restaurant, what they could do, they could go onto the website, see what's available, book the table for two hours, um, order their food as well drive to the restaurant in 15 minutes and by the time they sit down the food comes over they eat they have their two hours they chat they drink they do whatever they leave that's a system that could be implemented as well and can my current system accommodate for this yes because the website i've opted for a cloud website system so i don't have the web server um, on site is not in the restaurant i've opted for something like let's say for argument's sake um, wix or squarespace or wordpress are one of these things that the servers are elsewhere they're always backed up. Downtime is very minimal. If I want to make my website really, really big, it's got, all I have to do is get a person who knows how to do websites or make websites, come in, make my website. It doesn't really affect what happens at the restaurant. It only affects me paying that person a bit more and the website having a bit more traffic. But that doesn't really affect me long term. So hopefully that made sense. Uh, these are all the bullet points. And I'm going to scroll through again so you guys can pause the video here to look at the first one. You can pause here to look at that. You can pause here to look at the second one, which is managing and supporting employees. There is more I could add here, but I'll just leave it simple for now. Again, make these fully fledged sentences. You can break them up into bullet points like this if you want, but make them full sentences, not just bullet points. So for example, here I said working online. What does that even mean? Why is that important? How is that going to benefit them? They're going to be using OneDrive and SharePoint, Microsoft Teams for communicating, so on and so forth. So turn these into sentences. 
The next one I have is this one here, managing and supporting the organization's customers. Pause the video, look at the bullet points again, add more if you need to add more. Um, yeah, that's it. And managing the organization, managing the organization's IT assets. Same thing again, pause and have a look through. I'm going to scroll down in a few seconds. There we go, pause and have a look through. And the final one is ability to respond to changes in the aims of the organization. Here we go. One thing I left off here actually is changes in the aims of the organization. All the stuff that we've bought, most of the stuff that we bought, not every single thing, but most of the stuff that we bought is able to be used by people or by companies in other sectors. So even though it's a Windows laptop that's going to be used at a restaurant, that same Windows laptop, let's say this restaurant shuts down and this person wants to sell everything or they want to open a different business, those same Windows 11 Pro laptops can be used in an office. Those same tablets can be used somewhere else. That same hardware firewall can be used somewhere else. Those same screens that were used in the restaurant um, kitchen can be used somewhere else. So most of the stuff that we've bought, except for maybe the, um, the POS system, is not specialized or not specific to the restaurant business. So we can always change it if and when we need to. And even so, things like POS systems, they normally have different functions. So the operating system comes as a whole and you can go in and alter, okay, what, do you, what kind of business do you have? I have a restaurant. So it, it will ask you to like, add food items to your menu. And then another one could be, I don't have a restaurant, but maybe I've, I've got a clothing store. And you can go in and add clothing store information to the POS system, to the till system. So hopefully that made sense. Hopefully that was useful. I tried to be as quick as I could in this one. I didn't want to type everything out. So good luck to everyone.